Hey everybody, it's Luna Vlog. I'm back again with another Queendom 2 ranking, this time for round two. This was the cover round where each artist is paired up and they cover each other's songs. All of these groups did well overall, and this ranking is my personal opinion based on the impact each stage had on me as a whole. I take things like stage presence, styling, set design, musical arrangement, and more into consideration, as well as setbacks some groups may have had. I know some people chose not to extend that kindness when it came to their rankings, but I will do that. I just think that's more fair. Anyway, I'm not grading each category, but those are all part of my overall ranking. Anyway, you guys know how this works, so let's just get into it. Number 6, Kepler. I know Kepler's dilemma at first was choosing a Brave Girl song to reinterpret because their concepts are more mature, naturally. But, um, and I saw somebody else say this, and I'm not taking credit for that at all, but it made me think. The emphasis on that was kind of odd because yes, they are young, but they're not a group with a childlike image. Like, we're basically treating them like they're busters, you know? Like, Brave Girls performed Mask just fine, and it wasn't a teen crush, youthful concept to begin with. I know they don't have that many options in their discography, but I just thought that was weird. Anyways, they chose Pool Party, which is a good choice. It's fun and fresh. One major complaint that I agree with was how Roland was shoehorned into this arrangement. It's not that bad musically, except for the I wanna play Rolling right now or whatever she said. It's just the fact that Roland was not necessary and kind of distracting. The dancing and singing was fine, like they did what they were supposed to do, but there just weren't that many standouts on that front. The biggest appeal was the stage setup. The Alice in Wonderland vibe in the beginning was very cute. I liked the keyhole thing and the bubbles. It was a lot though, especially when they used the underwater scenery in the background. I think they should have sticked to one type of summer concept, like either the typical bright summery thing or going the fantasy route with a mermaid concept. I think that would have blended the Alice in Wonderland idea better but I am nobody's creative director. Anyways, that's all really just to say that the stage was kind of boring and unfocused. I think they did so much better during round one with the minimal props. Like, they were in my top three then. This was them going the opposite route, but there was too much going on to the point where nobody stood out at all. Number five, VVZ. By the way, thank you guys. I now know how to say their name. VVZ ranked this low for me this time as well. But the truth is that I think that WJSN stage and VVZ stage for this round are interchangeable in my ranking. The idea they went for was unique and I did like the creativity, but the execution was kind of off. The usage of the mirror in the beginning was not that interesting for me and the rose petals looked so synthetic and felt kind of cheap like an at-home Instagram photo shoot. I wish they were real ones because it stood out to me, but not in a good way. One of the biggest criticisms I see was that the concept did nothing for the song, and that is true. I love Unnatural so much, it might be my favorite WJSN song. So yes, I'm being as biased as possible right now. The concept is lovely, but it could have been done with any other song and at some points, it detracts from the experience as a whole. Like, the instrumentation barely changes when the chorus starts, and that is such a wasted opportunity. All of Unnatural has this buildup to it that just explodes at the chorus, and I think we could have done way more with that, because this song should never sound so dull. Like, it's not a slow song, it's constantly moving, and it seems like it just doesn't do that anymore. I've also seen people say that the backup dancers didn't help, and I would kind of agree. I think they blended in a bit too much, but my main gripe was the music and it not fitting. The vocals were criticized pretty heavily and that's understandable. There were some unfavorable moments in there, but I think something was up with how the vocals were processed in the editing because they sound drowned out almost and that wouldn't be their fault. Anyway, I would like to see better from VVZ next time. Number four, WJSN. I know WJSN was getting dragged left and right for this one, and I think that was unnecessary. I must agree with the common opinion of the song not matching the concept. It's okay to take a bright song and turn it into something darker. Like, that's a very common thing to do. But the execution was just lacking, though, and that's something I saw with their last stage. See, you can definitely have dark imagery with contrasting lyrics, and also the other way around with, like, really happy imagery and the darkest lyrics ever. 
but this was an already popular song that has its own identity, so that makes it even harder to accomplish. They had a lot of great ideas, but I think they could have stayed true to the essence of the song. If it were me, I would have done Navilera with Psycho's concept. Something understated and elegant and even more gothic would probably be something I could see working for this song. But the truth is, it's a cute, innocent love song and adding that rap to it does not change that. And let's talk about that rap. Now, I am not one of those people that are like, Oh my gosh, this K-pop song should not have a rap. It ruins it. They should just sing. Not at all. Some of my favorite parts in K-pop songs are those raps that people want to take out. I'm going to use a comparison to explain myself better, but not to compare these two groups. So an interpretation of another group's song that was well done on Queendom would be Oh My Girl's Destiny Stage. I talked about it in the last video. It really must be a legendary stage because here it is. They added a rap that was not in the original song and it fit right in with their theme and it elevated the performance. Once again, that is not common with raps in K-pop because a lot of people would rather have them be non-existent. I know that they were trying to spin the song's meaning in a different way, so I applaud them for the attempt and I get it, but once again, WJSN suffers from trying to do too much in one performance. Number three, Brave Girls. Can we talk about what an improvement this was from the first stage? The vocals are on point, the concept suits them perfectly, it's unique, it's playful, like what else can I say? It has a nice little narrative, like it's fun, it's a good time. They deserved far, far better than the spot they got on the official results, but it is understandable considering that they're going against groups whose fans are insane when it comes to voting and stuff like that. I loved the Brave Bucks, I think that was such a fun addition to their whole stage, and it's nice for the audience to have a tangible reminder of how good your performance was. Only negative thing I would say is that they don't need to like shout into the mics, like we can hear you just fine. Not necessarily for this performance very much, but mostly for the first one. Out of all the groups, I can truly say that Brave Girls made Mask their own song through and through. Like if I had not known, I would think it was theirs. They owned it. Not much to say other than that, I think they went the right direction with this performance and it sucks that the results they got will make them think otherwise. Number 2, Luna. Hey Queen. Girl, you have done it again. Girl, you make me so proud. And I love you. What is there to say that hasn't already been said by Cardi B? This performance nailed it for me. Shake It would have normally been an odd choice for Luna to do in its original state, but taking this song and hamming up the retro vibe was a genius choice. The sexy vibe isn't one of Luna's strengths as a full group. I could probably see some subunits doing that pretty well, but it's never been a full group thing. They chose to play to their strengths, which is performing, and they gave us a show. The acting was pulled off very well, and it was super cute. The costume changes were executed very well and they were unexpected, which was very much unlike Kepler's. Um, the girl that had the blue dress, I'm sorry, I don't know all of their names yet. Her dress was very obviously different and we could see her clothes underneath, so it wasn't the best costume change. I've seen some people give Luna grief about the outfits, but did you guys watch the same performance that I did? It was supposed to be like a musical and the girls are playing two different groups. So naturally their clothes will not match. And it's also not the duration of a full musical. So their clothes are the way that they are. So you as a viewer can easily have context of what's going on. This is the only time where I would accept mismatched outfits because there is a purpose. Anyways, this was spectacular. It felt like their own concert. It was such a blast and there was so much attention to detail that makes it fun to rewatch. Another great performance from Luna, as always. Number one, Hyolin. When this woman appeared, hanging off of a hoop, using just her upper arm strength, no harness, I was stunned. Of course, it was more of a thing like for show and less of like technical tricks, but who even does this in K-pop? Once again, you know, the thing about Hyolin is not only does she have experience and is leagues above the other performers, she has a real dedication to her craft. I love watching Queendom for her just to see her talk about her plans for her next performance and seeing how she interacts with her crew. I'm so glad that Queendom is breathing new life into her career because she's able to shine here more than ever before and then attract new audiences. To be truthful, I would place Luna's performance for this round and Hyolin's at an almost equal spot, like they're not too far off from each other. I think someone said this on Twitter or Reddit or something, but it resonated with me. 
The difference, aside from skill, that Hyolin has is that she never forgets there's a live audience. This is much easier to do when you aren't in a group because a group's performance usually has different priorities, but Hyolin breaks eye contact with the camera for several instances and connects with the audience in a different way. She has to walk around in order to fill the stage and stuff like that. Not to mention, the girl can sing, and hearing that live must be incredible. However, I did not like the first half of the arrangement, and I know she did a lot of it herself, um, but it was just not working very well until the second half, and then that's when it went really crazy. I loved the Catwoman theme, that was so smart. It suits her and the song, which is what I expected because she's obviously gonna choose something that she can deliver well. And no matter who you are, it is not easy to take a song that is designed for 12 people that has a ton of like ad-libs and shouting and stuff like that and turn it into a solo song. I like how she incorporated Paint the Town in there too. It was really good. Overall, these performances were kind of hit or miss for me, which is expected, but at least they have the opportunity to show us something else next time and I look forward to it very much. So that's all from me for now. Be sure to like and subscribe so we can meet again. Thanks so much for watching and let me know what you think and give me your rankings too. Bye guys.